All right, my YouTube people. We are in Pullman, Washington on Nevada Street. About to take a right on Stadium Way. And we'll take a little look at the Pullman Drive from WSU campus on the way down to Wubble Y Park and see what it's like for all you people that have never been here, which is 99.9% .9 of the people that comment about the Brian Koberger case. Now, personally, I think he took a ride at the center section. I'm not going to because there is construction down on Main Street and I can't drive through it. I will show you all why I would think that he would have taken this route later, but let's see what's going on. What we're gonna really look at is uh, how long it takes, where the cell phone coverage ends and begins, and just take a look at the scenery. So we are taking a left on Main Street. There is a camera on this uh, intersection and uh, it's not in the PCA for some reason. And I don't think that the FBI wouldn't have asked for it after seeing him on the Nevada Street um, intersection camera. So I find it odd that it's not in the PCA. Here we are approaching Bishop Boulevard. Again, cameras on this intersection, not in the PCA. The FBI would have definitely asked for this camera footage in my opinion. It's not there. I don't know why. My guess is that it doesn't fit the narrative. Uh, this route goes along the west side of Pullman, I believe. It just kind of wraps around. Now up here on the left where you can see some cars turning and coming out of is Johnson Road, which uh, according to the PCA is not important at this point in time, but on the way back it will be, which will also point out some cameras and why they're on the PCA on the trip back home, but not on the trip uh, according to them to Moscow will also come into question. Now we're going through some businesses. You'd think that they'd have some cameras up here that would have seen him driving by that night if he went this way. But again, I do not think this is the route he took. And again, I will show you why later. We just passed the uh, hospital on the left. There's some more businesses coming up in some apartment buildings, I believe.
I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but that Chipotle to the left is where I just was about an hour ago. There was, there was a guy in a Sigma Chi sweatshirt from U of I, which I thought was kind of funny. We are taking a left on South Grand, which is also Highway 27, heading down towards Walla Wai Park, which of course is where Brian likes to go jogging, hiking, look at the stars and the moon on his late night drives and during the day before school started apparently. A lot of people don't really know, but uh, what the Palouse is kind of known for is it's wheat fields, just open fields of wheat and grass, not a lot of mountains or hills, a little bit of hills, which you can see on the video right now. We got about 18 miles to Wawa Wai Park. I probably won't have much to talk about on the way there, so we'll just kind of chill. You guys can enjoy the scenery. We are currently heading west out of Pullman, which if you guys aren't familiar with geography is the opposite way of east, which is where Moscow is from Pullman. So currently we are driving further away from Moscow. Um, I do have three bars of service right here, but as we get further out down towards Wawa Wai, that will uh, get worse signal and eventually it will drop off. Just took a right on uh, 195, the highway. That will take us most of the way there, I think. We're gonna take a left on some old Wawa Wai Road, which will take us to Wawa Wai Park.
I guess we'll pull off to the side here for a minute. This stuff kind of happens out in the countryside for all you city folk. example of what not to do on a bicycle but hey the car drivers are the problem I've driven about six and a half miles from uh, that intersection at Stadium Way and Main Street, just dropped down to two bars of cell service. So we are getting further away from Pullman out into the countryside where there are less people, there's less population, less need for cell phone towers. bar service now about uh, 7.3 miles just went up to two bars so it's gonna fade in and out probably when I go through these hills one bar again going up at a little bit of elevation so that might be why one bar of service 8.6 miles out
have no bars of service 9.4 miles away from the intersection at Stadium Way and Main Street. We'll see if I get a bar or two before we start heading down to the park. And while we're heading down to the park, please take a note of how steep it is. It is quite a big uh, grade down towards the Snake River. Maybe the fog would have been less a couple hundred feet down below on that night while he was out there hiking. There might not have even been fog out here. It might not have even been cloudy out here. If it was cloudy and foggy and Pullman. Who knows? I personally think you could still come out here and go hiking or running and do whatever you want to if it is cloudy and foggy. I just dropped or uh, got two bars of service out of nowhere 10.4 miles out went down to one bar Still one bar. We'll see when it drops off again. Oh, no service. Just clicked over to 11 miles. Currently we have been recording for 20 minutes. I did forget to say the time when we started. It is 4.06 now. 20 minutes ago would have been 3.46. Still service. Surprise. And as right as I say that goes to one bar. It won't last long though. I'd be willing to bet. We are at 12.7 miles away. Currently one bar of cell service.
service. 14 miles out. service 14.7 miles out we are about to take a right on the Wawawai grade road which will take us down to Wawawai Park of service for a couple of seconds then dropped down to one 15.2 miles out we are heading downhill already watch for the hills to get taller because we are going down we'll see what uh, time in area we lose service up here just went back up to two bars and down to one service it is 410 we are 15.7 miles out I will not be shocked if we do not get it again on the way down to the park we are still heading downhill we will pretty much be going downhill the whole entire rest of the way down to the park then we'll get some nice views for you all about Walla Wai Park show you the scenery down here on the Snake River I don't want to see thousands of you coming down here, okay? It is beautiful. Let's keep it that way. Unless you all want to go to hearings, because that'd be fun. Still no service. the best part about eastern Washington though. I grew up on the west side. All it does is rain there. It is green which people say is beautiful or whatever. Uh, maybe I just don't appreciate it as much because I grew up there and was in it every day. But it was always rainy growing up. Out here on the east side it's more of like a high mountain desert I think is what they call it. So we actually get all four seasons. We get a nice summer. 100 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and we also do get snow in the winter time which I think is fun but on the west side it doesn't get very warm at least it didn't when I was growing up lately it has been getting warmer not as much snow and just rainy and cloudy all the time it's kind of boring out here on the east side we do get some Sun which you can see is a lot better in my opinion. Still no service. I am so shocked. I hope you can hear it in my voice. also kind of notice how there's not that many cars out here driving and this is 4 p.m. on a Saturday it is beautiful out 
In the summertime, you'll probably see more when it's hot because people will come down here to, you know, go swimming, boating, all the fun stuff you can do on water. But it's not quite warm enough yet. You should be able to notice how much higher these hills are from just 10 minutes ago because we are going downhill at a pretty good rate. Still no service. Again, I am shocked. I might even ended up in a frozen shock phase if you would have. two miles away from Wawa Wai Park. Still no service. I am still in that frozen shock phase. How I'm staying on the road, I do not know. But sometimes you just gotta let Jesus take the wheel. to get down here to Wawa Wai Park. I think that's actually where I'm supposed to turn in. We'll find out. If not, we'll just take you down by the river, which would be nice anyway to show everybody what it looks like down here, because it is really cool. Supposedly there was a giant flood that came through here thousands of years ago that uh, made this canyon, which yes, I will have to turn around, but we'll do a little trip down here by the river, give you guys a nice view of the Snake River down here by Wawa Wai Park. somebody out on their jet ski which is cool good for them and there are some people out there fishing I doubt Brian was doing any fishing because apparently he couldn't flay a fish.
But that's all good, Brian. I don't judge you. There's a few benches facing the water down here. Which would be a cool place to come camp. Or perhaps even hang out, look at the stars, moon, hike, jog, run at nighttime. I don't know. I don't really judge people that aren't out there hurting other people, you know? Do what you want. Here we are at Wawa Wai Park. I'm not gonna miss it this time. It is 420 on 420. I don't smoke, but you guys do you. We are here at Wawa Wai Park. Let's take a look around. All right, I don't know what happened. The recording seemed to have stopped. I did just talk to a guy that works up here. He said the gates are closed at night, but they are not locked because again, there would be campers down here. So maybe Brian opened up the gate and drove in. Who knows? It is 4.30, I'm not sure exactly what time the recording stopped for whatever reason it did. But I'm gonna walk up back up to these signs because I don't think you guys saw them. It's a sign to go to the campground or the day use area. Here is the sign. The gentleman I talked to did say, at night, the gates are closed. They are not locked.
All right, we are coming up to the day's area. Got a couple of signs. Probably some historical information in here. We are heading down to the water. Some more restrooms up there. A little bit more of the water around here in this little cove area by the railroad tracks. I think I found a little trail coming around. But this is a nice little grassy area with some shade. Well, I'm assuming this just goes down by the water more on the railroad tracks. I'm not gonna go down there. I don't know where that trailhead goes, but uh, maybe people go hike up a little ways and come back, jog a little bit and come back. Who knows? You could do a lot of stuff down here.
Maybe you can see those. There's a couple more covered patios back there or whatever you want to call them. Even a swing set for the kids. I'm actually going to walk up there and see if it connects to that trail. I don't think it goes to that trail, but it might. I don't know. I don't want to bother the couple that's up there walking though. You guys can see on that opposite shore, it's kind of rocky. Maybe people like to come down here and skip rocks. That would just be a travesty. Oh, here's that little map that people have seen. So, kind of a small park, but you could definitely come down here, hang out for a few hours if you wanted to. Now I'm back to the car. So, I'm gonna end the video just for a few seconds. Be back with you all in a minute. All right, folks, I am back. It is 4.47. We are down at Wawa Wai Park. Still no cell service. Please, I hope you all are as surprised as I am. But let's get out of here. It's a nice little park. I'm sure it's quiet at night. Again, the gentleman did tell me the gates are closed at night, but they are not locked. 
So I don't know how anybody could get in here at night. It is 448. No cell service down at Wa Wa Wai Park. We are gonna take a left and head back to civilization. Maybe we'll find out where the cell service kicks in. I have driven 22.7 miles from here. So we will start our trip back up the hill see what we get where we get cell service let's see how long it takes No cell service. We're at uh, 25.6 miles. I don't remember the mile marker we started coming out of. Blah, blah, blah. I will calculate all that later. But more importantly, no cell service. I hope you all are still under a frozen shock phase.
the hill again pay attention to the hills this is a pretty good grade of a hill fairly steep No service. We are 27.7 miles out. This sign says the pavement ends. Pretty sure we had pavement on the way down, so that's kind of odd. But hey, that's where we took a right to go down to the park. No service. I guess this is where the pavement ends. Makes sense. Now I have three bars. It is 4.55. Speed limit on this dirt road is 50 miles an hour. interesting if Brian did take this route in his car. I at least have off-road tires. But hey, smooth. I don't see why you couldn't do it. 
You might have taken that route to the right though, which takes you a little bit out of the way. In fact, I'm gonna turn around and do that because I bet that's what he did. Sorry for your field farmer. sign did say it would have been closed from some date in November to March so technically it's open now might have been open on the night that he went for his drive Let's see if I can see the sign again he probably wouldn't have taken this road though if we're being real which I do like to be real Let's see what the sign says. Road closed, November 15th. Interesting, to March 15th. So, he would have been a day early for that road closing had he taken that road. But I doubt it. p.m. two bars of service 30.6 miles out we'll have to subtract a little bit for that uh, little detour we just took but nice sightseeing nice sightseeing I guess see a little broken down barn on the right it's kind of cool horse some nice rolling hills out here in the Palouse
these other media personalities. And don't forget the Moscow police. And hey, we're even back on pavement. Back on the dirt roads. That pavement didn't last long. Watch out, Birdie. No traffic signs. We might die without the government telling us what to do. It also says we're supposed to go 25, but how would I know that if there are no signs? roads are gravel which you all can see they are still pretty smooth though so a uh, white 2015 Hyundai Elantra could make this drive I'm quite sure of it I have never driven one but most cars are typically similar a little bit of common sense you can drive without traffic signs someone's got a blue Toyota 86 or Subaru BRZ out here which would be a lot of fun driving out here on these dirt roads if you guys are like me and like to get a little sideways sometimes and have a little fun sometimes. but when you're driving out in the country it's mandatory you give people the two finger wave I never forget we are approaching highway 195 which would lead you back towards Pullman Washington or if you took a right you could go on a nice loop which they think Brian drove on his way back from the scene of the crime Currently, I'm not going to go that way because I don't think that's where he drove that night. GPS isn't telling me to take a right here on this Johnson cutoff road. I am going to take this right. This might not be the route that he took, but uh, that's where I'm going to go because it'll still get us past that uh, building that apparently caught him on camera at uh, I think it's 5.27 a.m.
but apparently you can still get on Johnson Road if you continue up 195 and cut over at some point. I'm gonna take this road. Looks like the times are similar, so if this isn't the route he took, shouldn't change it too much. But I even think on the uh, Moscow PD's map of his possible route of travel that night, this is the way they had him go. on the Johnson Cutoff Road now. It changes names in a few minutes. But it will still get us up to where we need to be. little community out here where they make us slow down it's for the safety of the kids which uh, you know we like kids being safe so it's all right Interesting. I don't think I've ever been out on this road, but it's kind of funny how there's all these houses grouped together. I don't think there's a town out here, but maybe there is. Some cool old houses couple of newer ones that look nice. It's kind of cool. Maybe I'm distracted, but my GPS tell me the speed limit is still 25, but it says I'm supposed to go 40 around this corner. Which is funny, because that's higher than what the speed limit is showing. on a dirt road. I didn't get 
her the wave either, but I'm driving with one hand. So, my bad. of service currently 41.6 miles out from when this trip commenced. Looks like right around this corner it does turn to Johnson Road so we should be coming closer to the building that got Brian on camera the early morning hour after the crime was committed not forgetting the wave this time
one bar of service. We are 43.5 miles out on this journey. We are back up to two bars. Service is still not out, but it's going up and down. Three bars. About a mile out from him being caught on camera early that morning on his trip back to Pullman, Washington, where he resided. Right around this corner should be the building that he was caught on video. One of these buildings apparently caught him traveling northwards at about 527. I might be wrong on the exact time. But nevertheless, one of those buildings caught him on camera on his way home. coming back. Apparently he was caught on camera about five times in the next few minutes. According to the PCA, which I believe everything, every single word the PCA says, don't know about you guys, but I think it's a great document. Could really catch the killer, you know? We're currently on Bishop Boulevard. We're going to take a left on Main Street, head towards Stadium Way. We would assume they have him on this camera as well. 
one being one of the five cameras he was caught on coming back home. Magically, it's not on the PCA when he was leaving, though. Don't know why. Take a ride up on Stadium Way. Again, cameras. He should be caught here. This intersection right here is Nevada Street, where it all started. I'm gonna continue up a little bit, show you guys a little bit about of the university. Drive by the uh, football stadium and such. Cause it's a nice day. I hate driving through campus though because the speed limit's 20. Sometimes there's a lot of kids that like to cross the streets. I've got a funny story about what I did to some drivers on this road, crossing the streets. That's for another time. But you can see you got buildings on both sides. It's a nice little campus and a nice quiet college town typically not a lot of murdering going on around these parts but you know it happens I don't know if you guys can see the track on the left, but they're having some sort of event there because there's people walking all over and doing stuff. Beasley Coliseum is on the right where the basketball and probably volleyball play. folks i think i'm gonna end it here hope you guys got to see some interesting things uh definitely some bad cell service down near wawa Wai park see you all later